Hey, doggo man, what's going on behind the couch? What are you finding there, hmm? Let me take a look. Oh, nice. Yeah, I remember finding that someday and bringing it home. It's a nice piece of, I guess, MDF or so, coated white on one side. Perfect for painting on. And I also found this white plastic bag of stuff a while ago. And guess what kind of stuff it is? Art supplies. I had to do some sorting. Finally decided on the acrylics, which is the kind of paints I'm most familiar with. And for a motif, I chose our friend from last week. Sat down in front of his aquarium and took this nice photograph of him. You see, the colors look a little bit different than in the video. Well, with that, I opened a new file in Photoshop that has the dimensions of, uh, of the piece of board that I intend to paint on. I positioned my object in a desirable place there. And then because I found the background a little bit bland, I opened this uh, video, this bit of video footage I took from the bigger aquarium to find a nice fitting piece of background there. So this area here, yeah, that looks about right. So I took a screenshot from that. Brought it back to Photoshop. There. That seems like a good bit. And then I proceeded to cut out to isolate our beta here with the line tool. Path tool, what's it called? Oh, whatever. I drew a path and then made a selection from that. There we go. Duplicated the selected bit. Turned the original layer invisible. And there we have our fishy man on a better background. I found the background too bright though. So I put it on top of a black layer and then turned down the opacity. Now our fishy friend looks too pasted in because his shadows aren't dark enough. I fixed that with the levels tool. And that's good enough as a reference image for me to paint from. Now in order to get all the proportions right with my preliminary outline drawing, I added a few guidelines. One cross in the middle and then additional ones at the quarter points. Once that was done, I of course drew the same guidelines on the actual physical board in front of me. Using another one of those boards as a ruler, because I found a few of them. And I took them all home. And now to sketch out the outline of the fish. This doesn't have to be very precise, it's just about the proportions. To make sure everything sits in the right place. When I first started out with this uh, realistic kind of, of painting from photo references, I put a lot more effort into the outlines until I realized after the first coat of paint they're usually gone anyway. At least with very opaque paints which I'm used to painting with. But these ones are more on the watercolor side of things. Very translucent. Also, many of them pass their pull date, so to say. I mean, I have no idea how old these paints are. Some hadn't been opened yet, though. It was a fun exercise. Okay, one piece of multi-purpose tissue for brush wiping and a sip of fresh water. And we're good to go. I started out with the first wash of background color. Typical aquarium tint. Brownish greens. One first layer. Having the background something else but pure white makes it a lot easier to hit the right color for the central motif of the image. I was lucky in that there was a tube of bright turquoise in that treasure bag of found colors. Which is like the most Important color on the whole shiny fish there. My first goal at this early stage of any painting is always 
to get the entire canvas or board uh, covered in paint, which usually happens fairly quickly. At this stage, in this painting, I was still finding out how much these paints were like watercolors and less like these pastos, thick acrylics that I normally use. No, kind of got used to it. Now I'll let you watch for a while. Please excuse that the camera isn't always centered properly. I'm still learning. For some of the sharper detail, I utilized these uh, watercolor pencils from Faber-Castell. Especially the, the dark markings between the scales are a bit too sharp for my, my brushwork. Now these high contrast lines there look very crude, I think. Overall, I hope it works out. This fin, however, I found worked out very well from the get-go. And this one as well. Sometimes it's so easy to achieve a realistic effect by just applying the right kind of high contrast kind of paint. That's why painting from photo reference is such a good practice. It makes you notice how different tones of color can be, and usually are. There are much more striking contrasts in the reality before our eyes than we intuitively would dare paint, I'd say. Now this um, was the tail fin. It took some extra time. Like at the beginning it looked really, really shabby. I took a few extra passes to make it pop a bit more. Turned a little bit more towards the realistic. But yeah, at this point I'm already pretty much done with the fish itself. Himself, I might say. Some finishing touches here and there. Now you can see me applying some finishing touches to the background and these aren't really very sharp or detailed at all, and that's intentional, it's a good trick. If you want to direct the eye of the viewer to some part of the, of the painting, leave out the details on the rest. Oftentimes it's about what you don't paint. Oh no, bad camera angle time again. But there you can see the part I'm working on, the damn tail fin. I could have put a lot more time into that actually was pretty difficult. Well, at this point I was pretty much done with that painting because it's, it's a fun exercise to try found paints, but it's also a lot more difficult. It's like, like riding somebody else's bicycle. Yeah, that's a good comparison, I think. All right, yeah, there you have it. That's the finished painting here. All found materials cost me nothing, except for these fantastic uh, watercolor pencils. Yeah, I cheated there. Well, let me know in the comments if you want to see another painting video someday. I'm also open for ideas what to paint, actually. But for now, that's it. See you next week.